problem like this, what I have is sine of x equals square root of 3 minus sine of x. Now, I told you, and the other problem was very easy because it was already isolated, right? But this problem is not isolated. So what I'm going to have to do is get my variable with it, or get my variable with its functions by itself. So to do that, I'll just add sine of x on both sides. Now, just like simplifying and verifying identities, when you guys have difficulty with this, go back to variables. What if this was x equals 3 minus x? To solve this, you would add the x's to both sides. And let's call it square root of 3. Right? Forget about the sines, cosines. If it's, making, if it's messing you up, if it's messing you up, you need to go back to variables and just solve it that way. So therefore, now I have 2 sine of x equals the square root of 3. Now, to solve, I divide by 2. So I have sine of x equals the square root of 3 over 2. Nikki, I gave what you need, right? You already took the test? Yeah. Okay. So now we have sine of x equals the square root of 3 over 2. All right. Now what we need to do is find the values for x when sine equals the square root of 3 over 2. So again, we go back to our lovely unit circle. All right. And we know that this point is square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. This one is square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2. This one is 1 half, comma square root of 3 over 2. All right, so I chose a problem that's going to have the exact same angles than the other one, right? But yeah, I guess you can't always pick what you need. Um, so therefore, we know that these angles, this first angle is pi over 6, pi halves. I'm sorry, not pi halves, pi over 4. And that's pi over 3. So therefore, the solution, when my y coordinate, right, because remember, the sine of any angle is represented by the on um, the point where that angle intersects the unit circle, or the y-coordinate. So we look at and we notice that my y-coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. Actually, no, this one's going to be different. We're going to have square root of 3 over 2 for one, one answer. So we can say that my angle is going to equal pi over 3. But is that the only solution that my angle is going to equal pi over 3? No, because if I look at this, if I look at this point, if I go to 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Right? At that angle, 2 pi over 3, my sine value is still square root of 3 over 2. So as long as my two angles are in the first and the second quadrant, I'm going to have positive, um, positive square root of 3 over 2. So my angle is pi thirds and 2 pi over 3. Now remember. That solution is only true. That solution is only true when we have solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So if on a test I wrote, give me the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, which we call a constraint, that would be true. Yes? Go ahead, finish your question. Yeah, well, remember here, right, because last problem we did cosine, okay. right? So it was cosine of 1 half, so that's why we had to do those two. Now we're doing sine, which is the y coordinate, so it has to be just the y coordinate. Okay? okay? Um, and just and kind of think about that too. Remember, when sine is positive, all right, if sine's positive, it has to be angles in the first and the second quadrant, right? If cosine's positive, it has to be angles in the first and the fourth quadrant, right? And if tangent's positive, it has to be in the first and the third quadrant. Um, so anyways, those are our two solutions between 0 and 2 pi. However, if I say give me the solutions, um, all the solutions, then we understand that these two angles are not um, multiples of each other. So therefore, I can keep on adding 2 pi to pi thirds, and I can keep on adding 2 pi to 2 thirds and get infinite many solutions. So therefore, I'll have pi over 3 plus 2 pi r and 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi r. OK? Good? Well, we're not done with this, but.
Um, but yeah, a lot of times this is this is a little bit more straight.